Well, that was Rishi Sunak speaking yesterday. Let's now speak to the former Conservative Party leader, Ian Duncan Smith. Uh, Sir Ian, thank you for joining us this morning. It does seem like it's a bit what? of a shambles, this barge situation. Yes, it's only going to house 500 or so migrants, but uh, they were supposed to get on at the start of this week, and, and three days later, no sign. Uh, is the government simply incompetent on this? No, I think the key is, first of all, it's right to do this, and I suspect this is the start of uh, many uh, that will be uh, coming onto barges. The second bit of it, of course, is they've just been held up because uh, the fire regulation uh, crowd uh, had uh, observations to make, and they've said there basically need to be some changes to the security and protection on these barges, which they're going to do, which will take them, uh, you know, as you say, a week to get done. Uh, and then when they pass the inspection, then they'll be able to start putting them on. So we're talking about a week at, at most. That's what I think. So the key thing is, why do you why do we want to do it onto barges? Because we've got to start making it categoric that coming over here illegally uh, is not a comfortable place to be. And therefore, you're not going to end up just sitting around in some smart hotel somewhere in, in the United Kingdom, uh, possibly to get away, to get a job, all that sort of stuff. And so all of this makes it much more difficult the people to, when they think about paying the traffickers, to say, well, what are we paying for? Uh, and that then coupled with the legislation, which is critical, that has now passed. But I'm afraid, as you know, our problem is always with the courts and with the Com Court of Human Rights. Uh, but the reality is that then those who are here illegally then get sent either back to their home or a third country, or in this case to Rwanda. So I think this is a combination of two things not comfortable to be here, and at the same time, you'll be going somewhere else very quickly. We had, that, um, we have to get this. We had the leader of the Reform people. Party, uh, Richard Tice, in here earlier. He was casting doubts on whether there was even any truth to the fact that there was a fire safety issue with the boat, and he believed that had been manufactured by the lawyers who were fighting uh, for these asylum seekers, who are now using it as an excuse to not get on the boat because they're saying it's, it's too dangerous. Where do you stand on that? And, and if it is true that a proper risk assessment wasn't followed out, which seems like a very basic requirement, that's deeply embarrassing for the Home Office. Well, I suspect a proper risk assessment was carried out, uh, but uh, somebody has objected to this, and the uh, fire and safety people have come in, looked at this, and said there are things that need to change. The fact is they're obviously clearly not major things because uh, they're going to be ready within the week, uh, and that's the important feature. So uh, this isn't really, if it is a case of the lawyers, the lawyers have no uh, and nothing to argue about here because these will be categorised exactly the same as if they were staying uh, on land. So there is no question here. The key thing is uh, we've got to get this up and running. I know the government is determined to do that. Uh, I've be, had my own criticisms of, the, of government policy in the past, but the reality is I think this is a start of a very visible sign to those that are uh, in France who think that coming over here is worth the money, worth the risk, terrible risk, as many have died in the channel, as you know. Uh, and then you start to make this a disincentive. And then that coupled, which is critical, with the flights back to some other place or to Rwanda, then start to make that money that they would have spent on this not worthwhile at all. After all, they're sitting in countries uh, that uh, are, have huge human rights uh, protections, etc. So there's absolutely no need for them to be moving over the channel to come here. And so you have to make that decision a very, very big and dangerous one. Mm. And at that point, then people will actually say, it's not worth me spending that money and I might as well try and sort myself out over here. Now, of course, stopping the boats is one of the Prime Minister's five main priorities. And, and he's been out and about speaking this morning in the media before he jets off to California for his summer holiday. And, and I just wonder, one of the things that the Prime Minister said this morning is it's unlikely we're going to see an election in the first half of next year, uh, kicking the can down the road potentially, potentially an October or a November election. I believe the last time that an election could possibly be is January 2025. Is this an indication that the Prime Minister uh, is recognising that his five pledges are just quite far from being fulfilled at this stage? Well, I think, you know, frankly, we have a five-year term. We can choose in the UK constitution to go earlier uh, if the government wishes to, but uh, I don't believe that the government will want to do that. I mean, I know it sounds like we're just trying to hold on. It's not, actually. I think there's got a lot of things going on at the moment which are really difficult. The first thing is, of course, the whole of the war in Ukraine has meant an energy crisis 
that energy crisis has affected every country in the world, uh, in Europe particularly, uh, and to an extent here in the UK. And then if you add to that the issues around food and food pricing and inflation. So we've got a cost of living problem. We have to try and get that down to uh, stabilize it so that people are actually better off and not suffering as they are at the moment. And that'll take a little bit of time. So these five pledges uh, are based on the fact that we get and win this battle on inflation and on cost of living. I think we have to do that. But, you know, the reality is we've got the five years. We might as well use them to govern. After all, you know, you're elected for five years. Why not govern for five years? It always seems to me a strange argument that we didn't go earlier than the five years. Given, g- given that you've just given the list of how much there is to deal with and what a busy portfolio and a very packed desk Rishi Sunak has at the moment, I think a lot of our viewers and listeners would be saying, is this the right time to be jetting off on a two-week family holiday to California? Most of the country at the moment can barely afford their shopping bill at the end of the week, never mind a two-week trip to California. Does it look a bit tone deaf? I, look, I leave those decisions up to individuals in Parliament. You know, the, it's a pretty pressured time in Parliament, and sometimes you don't see your family pretty much for most of the week, certainly sometimes not even in the weekends uh, because of the constituency work that you do. So the reality is uh, that for somebody with a youngish family with him, uh, he wants to take a holiday, and uh, I'm not going to, you know, with regard, I'm not going to sit in judgment on the Prime Minister for his decision on that. That's a family matter. Uh, and I just think, frankly, uh, I'm not going to make a comment about that, but it's up to him. But he certainly deserves a holiday.